Dragon Riders, Kaze no Keru, by Night Dragon Zero. Firestorm's Perspective I grasped the gun tightly and waited. It's surprising how fast you learn to use things when your life is in danger. Still, not like I haven't held a gun before, I just haven't used one as a human. The room was currently filling up with some kind of gas, but I was safe thanks to the gas mask my mysterious friend had tossed me. He chucked a lot of information in my direction, too. Team Rocket and Sylph after me because they thought I was Jade and they thought he was a Chimera. Oh, the irony of it all. I remembered that I had left Dracia and Mirage with Agwell, so I had absolutely no backup. Not like I could get help from the Pokémon with who knows what gas floating around. I hoped that Agwell was alright, considering all of this. The door was shoved open as two Team Rocket agents, also in gas masks and carrying M4A1 assault rifles, stepped in. They were expecting a disabled, choking opponent. Pity they were about to get a fatal surprise. I stepped out from my hiding place and fired, giving both headshots even before they had a chance to move. Others from outside must have seen their comrades go down and started firing randomly, shattering the windows. Fortunately, I was in a much better position and was able to take down the two riflemen with relative ease. I waited until I was sure there was no more soldiers in the current area, then reached down and searched the two bodies inside the room. Just like the games, I thought grimly. Even as a Charizard, I still had three fingers that could be used on a keyboard and mouse, and thanks to Jade, I'd gotten into playing Counter-Strike, but that was just a computer game. This was real life, and you don't get second chances here. Their rifles were too large for me to take, but both had been carrying USP pistols and clips, which I pocketed, and a frag grenade. I crept out the door and found a pistol pointed at me. Agwell! I gasped. Boy, am I glad to see you! The silvered-haired man was also wearing a gas mask. He sighed in relief and lowered his weapon. I'd say the same if not for our current predicament, he replied. What happened? How did you get here? I asked. I was just standing there, and someone suddenly jabbed a gun at my back and ordered me not to move. He dragged me someplace dark as some crew members started ushering all the passengers below deck. He just told me that I needed to go help you and tossed me these. Yeah, I am kind of in a bad spot, I agreed. I gave Agul a brief synopsis of my meeting with my own stranger. He also said that they'd take care of the passengers and we should just concentrate on getting out alive. He instructed me to leave by the rear of the boat, Agul explained. Serac's already in the water. Dracia and Mirage are right here. He tapped his belt. I heard footsteps, followed by voices shouting. I caught a glance at the Team Rocket agents coming around the corner. Get down! I yelled, knocking Agul into the room. I pulled the pin of the grenade with my teeth and threw it. It was quite rewarding hearing the screams. You know how to use that? I asked, pointing at Agul's M92F. Well, I've played paintball. That'll have to do. Come on! I pulled him up and led him down the corridor in the opposite direction. Unknown's Perspective Click. Is everyone in position? I asked. Yes, the Flareon replied. Blaster's down in the wall. Alkin has gotten the other person informed, and he'll also be taking charge of hostages. So it's up to me now, I muttered, looking down at the dead man in front of me. The rocket commander of this mission that I'd shot in the back of the head, in cold blood. And that it actually made me feel good for all the grief Team Rocket had caused me. Now I had a chance to get back not only at Team Rocket, but at self special forces as well. Team Rocket had sent a squad of their agents in disguise onto the boat, after what they believed to be an unidentified Chimera. Sylph had intercepted their plans, and had also placed several agents on board. Only Sylph Special Forces had some backup due to arrive, to deal with not only the Rocket presence, but the Chimera as well. The ship's bridge was high up, had a lot of cover, as an excellent place to use the weapon I now held in my hands, the Fren SAS R01 Zombie, a semi-auto sniper rifle. Fifteen rounds, expandable stock, scope, and silencer attached. You don't have to do this, Click said, noticing my hesitation. No, I must. I owe it to Tim, Rhina, and the others, I replied firmly, lifting the sniper rifle up to the window. I may not be able to undo what I did in the past, but I can at least give this Chimera a chance, whoever he is. There was absolutely nothing about him? Nothing that I found, but they're after him, and I can only try and deter them here. Click opened his mouth to say something, but the hissing of my comm link interrupted him. Sylph's SF commander has arrived, Alkin's voice came from the other end. Starboard side, upper deck. You see it? Affirmative, I said, glancing out the window. A rocket patrol is headed their way, preparing to engage. They'll all be distracted, so you'll have your chance. How about you? 
I'm almost to the hostages. No problem, so... Wait! Abedos! Faint attack! The comm link carried over the growling and several screams. Alkin? I asked, worried. Don't worry, Abedos took care of it, Alkin replied. Just do what you have to do, partner. I'll see you in a while. Over and out. Abedos was his houndoom, and a rather powerful one. Silently, I shouldered my sniper rifle and took aim. Click stood and watched, knowing better than to disturb me. Sylph's newly formed special forces wore dark blue uniforms with Kevlar vests. Fortunately, they didn't see the need to don any headgear. The commander and his asides were clearly identifiable through their shoulder markings. They were arrogantly dishing out orders, thinking they had everything under control. How wrong you are. I pulled the trigger. The man went down with a bloody mark in the center of his head. That immediately plunged the special forces into a state of panic, allowing me to take out two other officers as well. Then the Team Rocket attack squad arrived. Both sides went into a firing frenzy. It was a pure war zone, making me glad I was up here. I relocated my position along the corridor and fired, taking out several more rockets and SFs. The corridor was supposed to have been secured, but the dead rockets on the floor proved otherwise. Some of Alkin's ninja poison. The hostages have been rescued, the comlink hissed, and the charges have been set. How about your quarry? Not yet, I muttered, looking down at the back of the boat. No, wait, they're here. The fiery-haired Chimera leapt off the second level and threw off a flame attack from his hands, torching two SF soldiers before brutally gunning them down. His silver-haired companion followed, together with a Dragonair that had obviously helped out. There was a hidden comm link in the gas mask I'd given to the fiery-haired man, Jade, and I now switched to it. There are some hidden websuits and scuba gear there, in the green box in front of you, I instructed. Get into it and get far away from this ship, ASAP, because it's about to go up in flames. I'll cover you until then. Wait! Jade spoke into his comm link. Thank you. We really owe you for this. You don't owe me anything. Go, hurry. Jade continued speaking even as he slipped his wetsuit on. But who are you? Why did you help me? He queried. I'd like to explain, but there's no time, I replied hastily. Can't you at least tell me your name? Des. Des, he nodded. I'll keep it in mind if we ever meet again. That'll be highly unlikely, but there's always a slight chance. Good luck. You too, Des. Farewell. With that, he strapped his mask on, grabbed his backpack, and leapt off the boat with his companions. I switched my comm link back to Alkin. You done? I'm already at the rally point, strapping on my gear. Hurry and get down here. There's about a minute till all those C4s go off. On my way, I said, silently cursing myself for taking too long. Click, get in, I ordered holding up a Pokeball. Unless you want to get wet. I'll be fine, you watch yourself, the Flareon said as he disappeared. I was already running, winding through the twisted corridors of the ship. I was already dressed in the wetsuit, but didn't have any of the scuba gear on. Realizing that I wouldn't make it in time, I raced for the third level balcony and threw myself off, landing close to my companions in the water below. Alkin already had his scuba gear strapped on and was holding on to one of Blaster's cannons but I had no time left. Blaster, dive down now, I gasped. But you're not, the Blastoise protested. Dive, I ordered, taking as deep a breath as I could. I held my breath as Blaster descended. Even under the water, I could still feel the heat and the vibration of the explosion above. It had been Alkin's plan, the explosion that would kill all on board. With the passengers and crew safely away in the lifeboats, and Jade's group swimming off as well, that left us with only ourselves to worry about. We cut our timing a little too close, and the only way for Blaster to avoid the explosion was to dive down. It didn't work too well for me, but Alkin shared his oxygen with me by passing the mouthpiece between us until we finally surfaced to admire our handiwork. Well, that's that then, I said grimly, taking the rest of my scuba gear from Alkin. Indeed, the ex-rocket elite nodded, pulling off his mask. It revealed the Chinese man's brown eyes and drenched black shoulder-length hair tied into a ponytail. Well, I'm now officially dead, along with the rest of this squad. Where will you go, then? I don't think you'll be able to go near a civilized area for a while, though. I think I could stay around these islands for a while. He gestured towards the several islands further off. I heard they've been looking for full-time divers to help map out and explore the Olivine Reefs. Lucky you, then. I have to be back at the base by 1900 hours. Too bad I found out about this mission a little too late. After everything you've done for me, I wish I could do something to help you somehow. Don't worry about it. Staying in Team Rocket has its advantages. Well, that's your point of view. Alkin nodded. We better get going before the Coast Guard gets here. Yeah. Will you be okay by yourself? I'm a strong swimmer. I'll manage. Alright. I'll see you around, I guess. You too, Des.
We shook hands, and then went our separate ways into the ocean.